Hey guys, CJ with Roswell Astronomy, and today we're going to look at the Orion 10 inch Newtonian astrograph. <laughs> Let's have a look. This Orion 10 inch Newt is a reflector type OTA. The optical diameter is 254 millimeters. The focal ratio is f3.9, which makes it fairly fast, though not quite as fast as, say, the Celestron Rosses. However, it does give you a longer focal length of about 1,000 millimeters at a significantly reduced price, being $699 retail. The length is about 38 inches long, and it weighs in at 25 plus pounds, as it is, no attachments. It is made out of steel tubing, but certainly the rear does carry the bulk of the weight due to the mirror back there, and this does make balancing a little difficult. If you're using for imaging, your camera will offset this a tad, and I was able to find a halfway decent balancing point. This astrograph comes with a 2 inch 11 to 1 Crawford style focuser, as well as tube rings. It also has a 12 volt cooling fan for your primary mirror and a battery pouch that goes with that. There's also a 2 inch to an inch and a quarter adapter and a collimation cap. To round that off, you also get a 9 by 50 finder scope and a bracket and a dovetail bracket to hold it all on the mount. Alright, let's get back to the weight. While I'm not exactly out of shape, I still found that the combination of the weight and the sheer size and the bulk of the scope made it a little difficult to manage it. While she isn't exactly heavy, I did feel a few tweaks in the back and my shoulders while trying to muscle it around. I found it easier to install the ring assembly first onto the mount, then place the OTA into the rings and secure them. This wasn't so much because of the added weight of the ring assembly, but more because of trying to maneuver it, getting that dovetail slid into place while reaching around to secure it and hold the OTA to keep it from slipping back on me. A cooling fan is always a nice touch when trying to get your equipment down to ambient, but it does come separate in a box and you do have to attach it yourself. It is a minor inconvenience, but I don't understand why they didn't just go ahead and do that at the factory. It seems it would have been protected just fine in shipping, so I'm not sure why they went with that. The battery box for the fan is huge and it takes a lot of batteries. I would also suppose that Orion gets their battery bags from the same place that Celestron does, as this is pretty much the matching suitcase to Barbie's handbag. <laughs> Seriously, that joke still hasn't gotten old. The provided dovetail bar is nice, but honestly, I was not comfortable having that much weight on such a small 13 inch bar. While I'm sure it tests just fine and it could support the weight, I wound up replacing it as it was also a little difficult to get that bar to slide easily into my mount saddle. The finder scope is nice to have and it isn't exactly top of its class, but it performs well for its purposes. It is a little difficult to actually get it centered in line with the OTA the way it is sitting in its own little custom mount. The little screws that are there don't allow for precise adjustment, but it was close enough. And I really still haven't gotten it to align perfectly, but it works just fine. The tube rings are die cast and they feel fairly stout. The screws to hold down the clamp seem heavy duty and once secure, it holds the OTA in place fairly well and firmly. The 11 to one focuser is pretty sweet and it's very fluid on both the knobs without any kind of binding. There is also a draw tube lock knob, but it doesn't exactly hold it very locked. That being said, it did support the weight of the camera and the filter drawer, though you could slightly adjust the focuser with the lock knob and gauge. During the initial testing though, the focuser held up really good and it didn't slip, as near as I could tell. After testing the first two nights, I kept seeing fuzzy edges around the bigger, brighter stars on one side and also on the smaller ones when I was blowing the image up. At first, I was inclined to think that there was some tilt in the connection between the camera train and my focuser tube on the thumbs but then I checked it during the daytime and I realized it was out of collimation. To think that you'll never have to collimate a Newtonian is to think that Queen Elizabeth herself will be found at a techno party in Manchester over the weekend. Now I assume that while shipping, FedEx definitely smacked it around a little bit as this would lead to it being out of tolerance. It is extremely important to have good collimation on your newt to get crisp images, and Orion does supply you with a collimation cap to make this easier. Detailed instructions in the manual helps a new person try to figure it out, and with three large thumb screws on the back end of the mirror adjustment, along with some locking screws, made this fairly easy. Adjusting the secondary is also fairly simple, involving some Phillips head screws. Though I would point out that the collimation cap that I received, the uh, reflective back was actually off center. The hole wasn't, but the reflective back was. That made it a little weird. Now it is suggested to use a laser collimator, which would definitely make it a hell of a lot easier, not to mention more accurate to get dialed in. But the collimation cap did do an okay job and it was fairly easy to use. 
Certainly, the laser will help in keeping you from having to reach around and constantly checking through the focuser tube via the cap while extending all the way to the back with your arms, which mine were too short. I did some customization to this one by adding a Lismondi bar for mounting the rings on. I placed the finder scope on the back of the OTA by removing the thumb screw attachment and used a cap head from underneath to attach the finder scope shoe to the ring and then the finder scope to that. On the front, I added a 50 millimeter Orion mini guide scope, which paired perfectly with my old bulletproof Starshoot auto guider. The placement is just right to allow the finder scope to still be useful, though I do get a slight red glow at night from the SSAG LED, but it's not enough to cause any issues. And it's just slightly off center, so it works well. Fast forward and with the rig loaded up, I carefully balanced everything and then I used yellow tape at six different points to aid in fast setup, for later down the road. Overall, this is a nice alternative for someone intermediate in astrophotography or visual use that is looking for a cheaper alternative to get a fast f-stop astrograph. The downside is of course weight and bulk and you will need to collimate occasionally. It does come with a few extras that are right for the price but plan on spending a little bit more to get exactly the way you want it. The manual is pretty straightforward and there are loads of videos out there to aid you in setup, collimation, and the use of it. Next up, we're going to put her to first light. Hey astronomy fans, you want more great content and can't wait to see the next installment on Roswell Astronomy? Well be sure to hit the subscribe button down there and while you're at it, please hit the like button to let me know that I'm giving you what you want. The bell icon is to let you know the next time a new video is uploaded and as always, thanks for watching. Okay, that's enough. Go do some astronomy stuff.